The 4070 Ti has been officially phased out, but to clear stock, we're starting to see heavy, heavy discounts. Uh, bringing new prices on 4070 Ti's down as low as $680 right now, other models at $690, $700, a whole bunch at $710. So, uh, you know, that's a huge discount compared to their original MSRPs, but this is happening because of NVIDIA's Super Series. And we have a 4070 Super uh, available at a $600 MSRP, ton available at that price, occasionally seeing them discounted as low as about $580. So what we're looking at in this video is what if you stack them up against each other at current pricing rather than at uh, you know, uh, their actual MSRPs, right? Because again, the 4070 Ti got those heavy discounts, but they're both 12 gigabyte cards. If you're curious which one I'm using in this video, I'm using the Asus Tough Gaming uh, OC. I think it's a very small factory overclock on this one, uh, on the 4070 Ti. And my 4070 Super is the NVIDIA Founders Edition. And here we're seeing, uh, uh, we're gonna see a variety of differences, but we're looking at the percentage difference especially because let's also look at the pricing difference because they have the same kind of features and all of that. If you compare the lowest price available new right now at 680 versus 580, we're seeing that 4070 Ti costs 17% more. And if you compare more typically available pricing at 710 and 600 respectively, it's about 18% more. So we're looking at 17 to 18% more money Money. And I know uh, a lot of you guys are value conscious. Are you really getting uh, that extra performance for the extra money? And again, if you're value conscious, you should absolutely uh, be using your old GPU to fund your upgrade for your new GPU. So many people just toss it in a closet. It sits there, it gathers dust, and it does nothing for you to increase your upgrade potential. And today's sponsor, Jawa.gg, offers you the simplest and fastest way to sell your GPU you sell your functioning GPU to Jawa directly for instant cash. Also check out their market because a lot of times the best deals are available on the used marketplace. And if you use code Owen10, you, I can save you $10 off your first purchase at Jawa following the link in the video description and or pinned comment. So how, what do I mean by this being the simplest and fastest way to sell your GPU? Cause you can list it yourself uh, and, and manage the listing and all of that. But if you wanna take the hassle out of it, like I have friends who are like, I don't wanna go through the hassle of selling things myself. This is what I mean by their instant offer. Step one, tell them about your GPU model and condition, you get an instant offer. Offer. Uh, you print your free shipping label and mail them the GPU. So that shipping cost is already factored into the offer they're giving you, it takes all the hassle out of that. They inspect it, make sure everything checks out and boom, most sellers get paid within one business day after the part is received. So super quick and simple, uh, gives you a lot more value than just leaving it in your closet. And I've got friends who are like, I was gonna sell it locally, but then I thought I'd get mugged or something like that, right? Takes all the hassle out of it. Follow the link in the video description and or pinned comment. And again, let's now t check out the value of the parts we're talking about today. Like I said, 17 to 18% more money. And in Alan Wake 2 at 4K high settings, notice I've enabled DLSS quality because in my testing, I don't just look at, let's just max everything out and see how it goes. I look at the more realistic use cases. We might max things out and then realize it's not going great. So we kick on DLSS quality, which a 4K resolution looks very, very good. And that's getting us to around that 55 to 60 FPS range. 62 on the 4070 Ti versus 55 on the 40. 70 Super, uh, giving it about 13% more performance, although only an 8% lead in the 1% lows. We'll track that over here. Uh, so you can see that on that test, you're not getting your money's worth, although it's somewhat close. But what if you kick on frame generation? And that's right, we'll look at that too. Well, with frame generation enabled, frame rates jump to 74 and 80 respectively, now only giving you 8% lead on the, on the much more expensive 4070 Ti. So is that really worth the extra $100, right? You're not getting any more VRAM, they're both 12 gigabyte cards. Do keep in mind that uh, performance achieved through frame generation, I've got my little disclaimer up there, is not equivalent to those same uh, frame rates achieved without frame generation. And what if you wanna kick on pass Path tracing, is that extra $100 gonna get you a lot more performance? Well, not really at 4K resolution. We're seeing a 9% lead here in the averages, bigger than that in the 1% lows, but with uh, 26 and 21 respectively, they're both bad. Here we're seeing performance mode upscaling with the RT high settings enabled, which is kind of their full ray tracing mode in this game. Uh, and it's really not a great experience. And if you try to kick on frame generation to save yourself, you might be like, well, now we're getting 48 and 53 FPS respectively. So 10% more performance on the 4070 Ti. 
Uh, the problem is that both of them are kind of getting spiky frame time graphs where I think we're running over VRAM usage. And so that's actually leading to weird 1% lows where actually the 4070 Super is doing a little bit better. Uh, but also let me pause this for a second. And I want you guys to take a look down here when I play it again at the average PC latency because it's gonna be very, very high. Not really an experience you'd want. And that's what happens when you enable frame generation uh, from too low of a base frame rate, in addition to image quality artifacts. So I don't think either of these GPUs are gonna give you a good 4K path tracing experience, even using DLSS at the performance mode. Now, if we drop down to 1440p and we go down to high settings, both GPUs are doing well. We're at 60 FPS average on the Super and 66 on the TI. That's a 10% advantage for the extra $100. Uh, and the 1% lows are a 7% advantage, but both were doing well. And again, both are in, uh, able to in, uh, enable DLSS quality, which now gets you a high refresh rate experience. And this is without frame generation, 99 uh, versus 90 FPS. So again, a 10% lead in the averages for the 4070 Ti, although the 1% lows are only a 6% lead at 66 versus 62. But both of them are giving you great experience. But ask yourself, well, yes, the TI is doing better. Is it giving you a meaningfully different experience for that extra $100? And I just, I'm not feeling it here. If we go ahead and kick on path tracing at 1440p with quality level upscaling, which still looks quite good at 1440p, we're now playable, but I wouldn't say it's a great experience at 47 and 43 FPS respectively. It's a 9% lead for the TI, but ask yourself again, 47, is that meaningfully different than 43? Are you suddenly now comfortable with path tracing? Well, uh, you could try frame generation on both of them. And with the higher base frame rates in the mid 40s, some people will find this amount of latency and image quality acceptable and some people won't. It's gonna be kind of a personal preference thing. Um, uh, we're at here at 71 versus 79 FPS average now. So the TI is taking an 11% lead and a, bit, and a bit better than the 1% lows, although those can be just a little bit spiky and kind of throw things uh, for a bit of a loop there. But anyway, again, it's still a similar experience on both GPUs. Now, I'm not sure how many people are buying six to $700 graphics cards for 1080p, but you, those people are out there and I will test things out for you as well. I know a lot of people are like a high refresh rate esports monitor. Uh, and then you also play single player stuff like this. So, hey, let's test it out. 1080p high settings, we're at 92 and 85 respectively, which is an 8% lead in the averages for the TI. Uh, and the 1% lows are even closer at only a 3% lead. If we go ahead and kick on the RT high full ray tracing preset uh, with no upscaling, even at 1080p resolution, neither GPU is offering an amazing experience here at 42 versus 39 FPS, 8% lead. But again, 42 and 39, It's again, it's playable in a slow paced game like this, but um, again, these just aren't really path tracing uh, monsters. They can definitely do ray tracing, but the full ray tracing experiences are a bit rough. You can kick on DLSS quality, which at 1080p I don't love doing, but it's not a complete disaster. You get, it does make you get uh, 60 FPS and 66 respectively uh, with the path tracing mode enabled, which is a 10% advantage for the TI and an 11% lead now in the 1% lows. So. Again, I'm still not sure 66 versus 60 is worth the extra $100 in my opinion. You can kick on frame generation on both GPUs, and now they're both delivering over 100 FPS of motion fluidity, but again, it's not a drastically different experience on each of them. At 111 versus 102, 9% lead for the TI in the averages and a 5% lead in the 1% lows. You definitely had a high enough base frame rate here for frame generation to work very well from a latency perspective. From an image quality perspective, in this game. I just don't like how the flashlight beam interacts with frame generation in this game, but you know, kind of a personal preference thing. Let's look at some more path tracing. So again, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 with its RT overdrive is our other big path tracing showcase. And I don't think either GPU is really capable of a good experience at 4K resolution trying to path trace. Even with DLSS performance, we're at 43 versus 39 FPS. So 10% lead for the TI, but again, not a meaningfully different class of experience. You can kick on frame generation with DLSS performance mode upscaling, but you're still only in the mid 50s at 51 and 54 respectively. So only a 6% performance difference. And remember you're achieving this through frame generation off of a very low base frame rate. So the latency is kind of high and image quality will be more, have more noticeable artifacting. Uh, from the frame interpolation because there's larger gaps between frames to interpolate. So I don't think it's a great experience. 
Uh, if you move down to 1440p though, the path tracing in Cyberpunk becomes much more usable. Quality level upscaling gets you into the mid 50s on the TI at 55 and 51 FPS on the 4070 Super, 8% advantage to the TI. And you could go down to balanced mode upscaling at 1440p if you prefer to get closer to that, you know, 60 FPS line. Uh, so kind of a usable 1440p path tracing experience, especially if you then kick on frame generation, where if you're in the mid 50s, I don't find it to be too bad of a baseline to, frame, uh, to generate frames off of. I prefer to be at 60 and above, but this is, I think for a lot of people gonna be acceptable. And here we're seeing 90 versus 85 in motion fluidity. Remember the responsiveness won't feel like a 90 FPS experience, but we're at a 6% advantage to the TI. So still not a meaningfully different experience between the two GPUs. At 1080p, we're once again seeing that without upscaling, neither GPU does an amazing path tracing experience with RT Overdrive delivering 44 versus 40 FPS, which is a 10% lead, but again, 44 versus 40. Uh, is that extra $100 getting you a different class of experience? And I would argue it's not. Um, and again, the 1% lows are only a 6% advantage at 33 versus 31. And so you could enable quality level upscaling at 1080p. You might find that an acceptable trade-off to get a comfortable frame rate in a path tracing mode because the path tracing does add a lot to this game. Uh, so if you would like to, tr to upscale at 1080p, you can now get 81 versus 76 FPS, still only a 7% advantage to the TI, which is just not a massively different experience compared to the Super. So. Still, I don't feel like it's justifying its extra $100. And if you kick on frame generation on top of DLSS quality, you're now uh, taking advantage of a high refresh rate display uh, at 133 and 125 respectively for motion fluidity. Um, again, you're losing some, some sharpness to the image for sure with the uh, upscaling at 1080p, but you're getting uh, you know very good lighting and, sh and reflections and things like that with path tracing. But again, are you getting a meaningfully different experience between the two GPUs? I'd say not really. Now, I was mostly using Cyberpunk as a path tracing benchmark since I focus on the newest games in my reviews. Uh, but uh, just a reminder that you don't have to use ray tracing at all. You could just play at 1440p ultra in which case both GPUs can get uh, a, a good experience, 91 and 85 respectively, 7% advantage to the TI, no upscaling required. So if that's your preferred method of playing, they both do well, but again, I don't think the TI is delivering a massively different experience. What about another one of the latest graphical showcases with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 4K Ultra? And by the way, this game does use ray tracing at all times. There's no way to fully turn it off. Uh, we're seeing a 12% advantage to the TI at 37 versus 33. So while it's one of our stronger leads for the TI, it's really not a, a, not a, um, not a good experience on either GPU in the mid 30s. If you kick on DLSS quality, they both gain a massive amount of performance and we're now seeing 60 versus 55. So very playable now with a 9% advantage to the TI. Uh, again, I'm, it's, it's doing better, but I'm not sure it's a hundred dollars better in my opinion. Uh, and so, you know, both are, you know, nearly 60 FPS on a variable refresh rate display. You're not going to notice huge difference between the two experiences. And at fork, if we turn down to the high settings and don't upscale, we're now at 49 and 45 respectively. So again, a 9% advantage to the TI over the Super. Although once again, I think we're back to frame rates that are probably not what you're looking for for playing a first person shooter style game like this one. But I think the high settings give us a better uh, baseline from which to upscale, which is what we're gonna look at here. So this is probably more like how I would play the game at 4K on a 4K display with these graphics cards. I would probably go down to the high preset and enable quality level upscaling. And now we're getting 75 and 70 respectively, uh, which is uh, I think a good experience on a, a for a uh, you know first person shooter style game. And it's a 7% lead for the TI, which is well, like I said, not that meaningfully different of an experience for that extra hundred dollars. Now, what if we drop down to 1440p resolution? Well, now the 4070 Ti is offering 69, nice, versus 62 on the Super, an 11% advantage. Um, but again, they're both, you know, in the 60 FPS, you know, <laughs> range. Uh, so it's, like I said, kind of a, you get a better experience on the Ti for sure. Um, 
whether that's worth an extra hundred dollars to you, uh, you know, you make your judgment call there. You can also kick on quality level upscaling, which is probably what I would be doing, uh, or maybe turning down to high or maybe both. Uh, and here we're now able to get 104 FPS on the TI and 95 on the Super, 9% advantage to the TI. But again, uh, I think on a variable of fresh rate display, they're both going to feel like about 100 FPS. <laughs> and so um, again, I think good experience on both of them. But uh, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Not quite sure the extra hundred dollars is is paying off. At 1440p high settings, if you don't want to upscale at 1440p, uh, you can now get a very good experience on both. It's 88 versus 80, so a 10% advantage to the TI. So it is definitely doing better. Again, whether that's worth the extra hundred bucks to you, um, you know, uh, that that's up to you. And the 1% lows are a 12% lead at 74 versus 66. At 1080p resolution, both GPUs do very well. At ultra settings, no upscaling required. At 100 FPS versus 92, it's a 9% advantage to the TI and a 10% lead in the 1% lows at 80 versus 73. So again, if you are buying this class of GPU for 1080p resolution, there's certainly a lot of games that you can just absolutely max out with no upscaling and deliver a high refresh rate experience. So I do see that, that there is some appeal to that for a lot of people. Uh, let's jump into some Unreal Engine 5 testing. So RoboCop Rogue City uh, offers the full Unreal Engine 5 feature set with Lumen and Nanite and all of that. And here we're seeing at 4K epic settings, 40 FPS versus 37 FPS, uh, which is an 8% advantage to the TI versus the Super. And the 1% lows are 36 versus 33, which is a 9% advantage for the TI. Now, neither one was actually doing that great. So let's kick on quality level upscaling, which with DLSS at 4K is very close to being free performance. Like, like I still use it on my 4090 when I don't absolutely have to, if I'm, you know, can get a good frame rate boost out of it. And Unreal Engine 5 especially responds well to upscaling from a performance perspective. And we're getting a 63 versus 58 result now, 9% lead to the TI versus the Super. Uh, which is, uh, again, um, you know, something, but not not massively different experience. At 1440p, at epic settings, both GPUs offer a good experience at 74 versus 69, nice, which is a 7% advantage for the TI versus the Super. Uh, the 1% lows are showing an 11% advantage at 63 versus 57. Um, but again, are, are, on a variable refresh rate display, are you really going to feel that 7% difference was worth that $100 extra? And especially when you can just kick on DLSS quality at 1440p. And again, Unreal Engine 5 uh, is very per pixel in performance, which means that we're now able to get uh, uh, well 99 FPS on the 4070 Super and 105 FPS on the 4070 Ti. So only a 6% lead now. And the 1% lows are a 5% advantage at 81 versus 77. So again, good, but similar experience on both GPUs. And the 1080p Epix uh, settings are offering very similar results to what we saw at 1440p with DLSS quality. 7% uh, advantage to the 4070 Ti and frame rates at 106 and 99 respectively. Honestly, this is one of the things about uh, a 1080p monitor uh, versus the 1440p monitor is that 1440p, you can use DLSS quality and often get similar performance to what you would get at 1080p native, but arguably uh, better image quality with the, for, uh, with the uh, 1440p reconstruction. But anyway, let's take a look at uh, Lords of the Fallen, which is my most demanding Unreal Engine 5 game. And at 4K Ultra settings, we're looking at 32 and 20 9 FPS respectively, uh, which is a 10% advantage to the TI, but neither GPU is really delivering the experience you'd probably be looking for. There's a 13% advantage in the 1% lows at 27 versus 24. Uh, if you kick on DLSS quality though, again, Unreal Engine 5 responding very uh, large performance boosts with upscaling, and we're seeing now 57 versus 52. So on a variable refresh rate display, playing this game probably with a controller, you're into pretty acceptable frame rate uh, territory. You could of course turn down settings lower than ultra or upscale a little bit more aggressively. The 1% lows are 45 versus 42. Uh, which is a 7% advantage. Now, if we go down to 1440p resolution, at ultra settings, neither GPU quite averages 60 FPS, but it's 58 and 53 respectively, which is a 9% advantage to the TI. And the 1% lows are at 46 versus 41, which is a 12% advantage to the TI. 
So, uh, you know, again, acceptable experience uh, for sure, especially playing on a controller, but if you're looking for the higher refresh rate experience, uh, you could kick on DLSS quality. And once again, we see Unreal Engine 5 have a very large performance boost when upscaling, and we're now getting 88 versus 83, respectively, at 6% uh, uh, lead for the TI. Uh, the 1% lows are showing a larger gap, but notice the frame time spikes right now as we round this corner. A lot of that's just Unreal Engine 5 traversal stutter, which can have a lot of run-to-run -run variance, so I wouldn't read too much into the 1% lows. And we're seeing the same thing at 1080p, uh, where we're seeing a larger difference in the 1% lows. But again, watch as we round the corner up the stairs, you just get traversal stutter, which like I said, it can be a little bit unpredictable in Unreal Engine 5. So I don't think it's so much a GPU difference as just how bad did the game happen to stutter as you loaded the new area. It's an 8% advantage in the averages for the TI versus the Super, 80 versus 74. Now, let's look at Starfield. Starfield at 4K Ultra uh, doesn't perform super well. So I went ahead and kicked on DLSS Quality, which is able to get the Super up to a 60 FPS average in New Atlantis, and the uh, TI up to a 66 FPS average, which is a 10% advantage. And the 1% lows are only a 6% advantage at 51 versus 48. Uh, so again, we're getting better performance on the TI, but it, not really a different class of performance. And if you kick on frame generation, then you're able to uh, take advantage of the higher refresh rate display. And again, 4K Ultra DLSS quality was already getting you a pretty decent baseline to generate frames from. Uh, so now we're at 91 versus 84, achieved through frame generation, so keep that in mind, uh, but still 8% advantage to the TI. So again, it's doing better, but uh, you know, $100 better, question mark? <laughs> 1440p Ultra, we're getting 73 versus 69, nice, which is a 6% lead to the TI. The 1% lows showing a larger difference at 38 versus 33. Um, but again, that's a 5 FPS difference there. They're both kind of stuttery in the 1% lows. Notice those 1% lows aren't really that great. Actually, wait a second. Did I type? I typed in the, the wrong 1% lows. Don't, don't look. Mistakes were made. So pause for one second. I was reading off my little counter here. I typed these in manually. The 1% lows here are actually 54 and 50, it looks like. So my mistake, let's go ahead and actually bust out the calculator and do this manually. 54 versus 50 is an 8% lead in the 1% lows. And please excuse my uh, sleep deprived state when I was typing those in. Let's go ahead and keep rolling. Apologies for the mistake. At DLSS quality, let's see if I fixed my mistake. It looks like I did. Okay, everything's good again, sorry. Uh, 1440p Ultra DLSS quality, we're now getting uh, 85 versus 89 respectively. We're getting closer to the CPU limits, so we're only seeing 5% advantages in the averages and the 1% lows. Uh, the 1% lows are 65 versus 62 respectively, and it looks like I actually typed things in correctly this time. Good for me. That also gives you a very high base frame rate from which to use frame generation. So if you want to smooth things out on a high refresh rate display, and this is also allowing you to push through CPU limitations, which you're starting to bump into in the city areas in the game, um, which is one of the best use cases for frame generation, in my opinion. Anyway, we're now getting 137 versus 129 of motion fluidity, and that's a 6% advantage to the TI. So again, not a meaningfully different experience. At 1080p ultra settings, uh, we're getting 91 versus 85, so a 7% advantage to the TI versus the Super, and the 1% lows are only a 5% advantage at 63 versus 60. And once again, uh, we're seeing that these GPUs, again, if you want to buy them for a 1080p display, you are certainly going to get a, a, a good experience in a lot of games maxed out. Let's take a look at the RE engine with Resident Evil 4 Remake and at 4K max settings, which does include some ray tracing and a lot of VRAM utilization. Uh, we're seeing a 9% lead for the TI versus the Super at 72 versus 66 and the 1% lows are a 10% lead at 64 versus 58. Now, while this is certainly good performance, I don't think the max settings make a lot of sense in this game. If you go down to the prioritize graphics preset, uh, you'll see that we can get a higher refresh rate experience that looks very similar. It turns off the kind of grainy RT reflections, which like I said, I don't, I don't think actually look that great in this game. And now you're up to 85 versus 78 and you still get a nice uh, 4K native result yeah, with good frame rate. So 85 versus 78 is a 9% lead for the TI 
And in the 1% lows, we're at 75 versus 69. Nice, 9% lead for the TI. And if we go down to 1440p resolution, even at max settings, you're already achieving a high refresh rate experience at 123 versus 114 FPS, which is a 9% advantage. The 1% lows are a 10% advantage at 107 versus 97. So once again, at the risk of sounding like an absolute broken record, repeating myself over and over and over again, the TI is doing better, but $100 better, question mark, right? <laughs> now, uh, if we look at 1080p, again, max settings are no trouble at 159 versus 150. It's a 6% lead for the TI and a 4% lead in the 1% lows. Although keep in mind that the higher the refresh rates get, the more other system limitations can enter the equation. The GPUs are still reporting 100% utilization though, so might not be any kind of CPU limitation. It might just be closer performance at 1080p. Uh, either way, let's go ahead and uh, move on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I decided to test this game at basic settings um, because I think for uh, competitive multiplayer games, people tend to turn down graphic settings in order to increase their competitive edge. But even at native 4K resolution at the basic preset, both GPUs do pretty well at 147 versus 138 respectively, 7% lead in the averages for the TI, larger difference in the 1% lows, but really only in the end, right as the screen kind of flashes, uh, most of the time it was closer together. Uh, at 1440p basic settings, we're now up into the mid 240, uh, 200 range, so at 249 versus 235, 6% lead for the TI, and only a 5% advantage in the 1% lows at 162 versus 154. Uh, and again, you could even kick on like DLS or something past that point, but you're already at very high refresh rate experience. And at 1080p resolution, we're breaking 300 FPS average on both cards, and even the 1% lows are beyond the 200 range. So we're seeing 333 versus 316 in the averages is a 5% lead for the TI, and 214 versus 212, we're basically tied in the 1% lows. It's a 1% difference. And if you're not able to get the kill at these frame rates, it is a skill issue. I hate to break it to you. But anyway, uh, I think that's going to be it for the benchmarks. Let's go ahead and uh, get a little bit of final thoughts. So as you probably heard me repeatedly saying throughout the video, uh, you're often not getting uh, better than 10% advantage on the TI. Like if, if we just look at that number and scroll through here, uh, it's often 10%, 9%, 11%, 8%, 10%, 8%, 6%, 8%, 10%, 7%, 6%, 7%, 7%, 12%, 12%, amazing, 7%, right? Do you see what I'm saying here? It's often 10% or less advantage for the TI. Both cards offer you 12 gigabytes of VRAM, so you're not getting any, you're not solving that problem by spending the extra hundred dollars. Both cards have the same feature set. Feature set. Uh, both cards have, uh, you know, in general, a very similar experience. Like, are you really going to feel like you're getting a different gaming experience by spending the extra hundred dollars? Or, in other words, performance-wise. Um, you know, uh, hey, maybe we'll look at this as a typical example. If you're 8% faster by spending 17 to 18% more money, which is an extra $100 or so, um, you know, what else could you have done with that in your build, right? So I think you get my general uh, conclusion, which is it's absolutely not worth spending the extra money on the, uh, on the TI. Now, I'm not saying you don't get more performance. So if you have the extra $100 and you just wanna get the best NVIDIA GPU you can for the money, you could certainly do that and you do get a better experience, but just not, uh, it's not a good value. Now, uh, I will also point out that there's competition from AMD with the 7900 XT. These are available now as low as $700. So if you are considering spending that extra $100, uh, take a look at the 7900 XT as an option because that does get you beyond the um, the 12 gigabytes of VRAM all the way up to 20, but it doesn't give you as strong of a ray tracing performance. So if that, uh, and it also doesn't get you as good of uh, an upscaler, but I have other videos looking at this. So you could take a look at, sorry, my kids are stomping upstairs. Anyway, uh, so you're not crazy if you heard some stomping noises. It's just, it's, it's my house, not yours, don't panic. Anyway, uh, so I think we'll just kind of leave it at that, which is uh, if you are considering spending the extra $100, 
maybe take a closer look at the 7900 XT versus the 4070 Ti, because when we're looking at the Nvidia offerings of the 4070 Super uh, versus the 4070 Ti, I think the Ti needs to come down even more. If it was only like $50 more, uh, then maybe we're talking a more even price to, price to performance scaling, but it's hard to justify getting worse price to performance scaling when it's not getting you anything else in return. No more VRAM, not really offering a meaningfully different experience. And again, don't forget to check out uh, the super simple uh, uh, sale of your old graphics card to get uh, to fund your upgrade. And also remember, some of the best deals will be on the used market and you can use code Owen10 to get $10 off your first purchase at Java following the link in the video description and or pinned comment. And a huge thank you to viewers, commenters, channel members. Uh, uh, you are all beautiful people, especially a channel members clicking the join button to directly support the channel financially is absolutely huge. I know not everybody can do that, but huge thank you to those of you who do, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.